What's going on everyone? Good evening. This is Brian Weber and this is a YouTube video where I'm going to talk about how to use Sierra chart to do back trading to improve yourself as a trader, either if you want to test a strategy or just improve in general, psychologically, uh, practice your risk management skills, you know, everything that's needed to become a successful trader. You can do this, you can perform your back trading exercises similar to how a professional athlete will practice in the off season. We can do that using Sierra chart and we can go back to any day in history that we have data for and we can trade that day or at specif specific times in the day, pretty much any type of instrument. Um, I'm gonna just discuss mainly about futures, but you can also trade equities, I believe. But uh, quickly, just wanna jump into what Sierra Chart is. So if you go to sierrachart.com, I'll leave the link in the description. This is the website, it kinda looks like it was made 10 years ago, but it's nonetheless has all the information that you need. And Sierra Chart is not free, but I actually, have a free subscription well I actually pay I think about $35 a month because I get the market death death data which is pretty much just getting inside into the order book so I can see where the bigger orders are but if you have uh, an account with AMP you can actually just get their regular package I think it's package two and it is actually free you just have to pay for the data feed which is $15 for all uh, all of the CME markets. So you can actually get started with a free tri trial as well. You can create an account, um, get set up with a data or trading service. I use CQG through AMP. And then there's some tutorials and then of course they're gonna say after the trial is done, you have to pay for it. You can either do that through Sierra Chart themselves or you can do it through your data feed provider, uh, which is well, AMP actually is my broker, so you can pay through them and they can set you up with it. It's pretty straightforward. But let's jump into Sierra Chart. So, where are you? Down here. So I'm gonna start with a basic chart book. It's empty. So I'm gonna create a couple charts. I'm gonna create, I'll go to new intraday chart. And the I'm gonna just focus on the ES, which is the EPM19. That M is the current contract, 19 is the current year. So hit open. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna just make some setting changes in this. So F6 is actually, if you hit F5, that brings up their chart settings. So I'm actually gonna change this to, let's just do five minute. And I'm gonna change this to candlestick bars, hit apply so we can see it update. I think it's loading in the background, yep. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Looks good enough for me. Let's add, so if you hold the shift and then you scroll your mouse, you can actually scroll out a little bit. This is all, you can drag the side, but if you hit the control, then left click on the mouse, you can adjust the height. It's pretty cool. It's actually pretty easy to use compared to toss. I would say it's much quicker and it has less data lagging problems that I've noticed, especially when you start adding studies. So for example, let's just add the, the VWAP, volume weighted average price. Let's see here. So based on underlying data, yes. Subgraphs, we will have a label. It should be there, it's gonna reload. Mm, go back to here, didn't actually show. I wanna make this a line, keep the name label, there we go. So, you, and you guys can add whatever indicators you want. I'm actually gonna create, let me make this smaller. I'm gonna just leave this five minute chart right here. And in my actual setup, when I trade futures, I have a lot more charts, I have range bar charts, I have a 30 minute chart and a four hour chart with pivot levels and Fibonacci's on it, the retracements as well. I have correlation charts with the risk on assets such as the equities like the NQES, YM and RTY and then the risk off assets like gold, 
10-year treasury note, um, the Japanese yen, and gold and silver, and also the dollar. But we're not going to cover that stuff. This is just going to be a pretty basic example. So if I want to do, I'm just going to duplicate this chart. So I'm going to click, right click down here, dupl duplicate the chart, come in here. Just going to make sure that we have enough space. So if I hit F6, I want to actually make this, excuse me, F5, I want to make this a 30 minute chart. I believe that the day the days to load is quite a bit, so it's going to take a little to load. Let me just add the pivot points here. Let me remove this VWAP. I feel like the pivot is right here. So there's our pivot points, our R1, S1, whatnot. I actually want to change this really quick to. I'm not going to use global. Chart text, let's make this white. I'm just gonna change the background so you can see that a little bit better. Change this to black. And change the colors of the candles. That actually is fine. Bar open, bar close. Candlestick up outline. I wanna keep this as green. Candlestick up fill. Green, I'll stick down, red, just so we can see this better. There we go. So let me zoom in. So we have our pivot points, we have our VWAP, and you can also draw trend lines here too. Um, you hit Alt at four, number four, you can draw a trend line. But uh, I, I wanna show you the replay chart. So just having these two, if you hit, I think, Control-R on the keyboard, let me bring this over here. It's Control-R, or if you go to Chart, then you go to Replay Chart, and hit the Replay Chart right here on the Control Panel. So what I recommend is using charts with the same link number. You could do all charts in the chart book, but I like using the charts with the same link number, just because sometimes I might not want to use all the charts when I do a back test. So what you have to do is, you click F5 on your keyboard, you go to Advanced Settings 2, do Link Number 1, hit OK. So all the charts that you want to include in your, in your chart replay and your back testing, you want them to have the same link number. So Advanced Settings 2, and we'll make that also Link 1. Really quick, days to load 30, that's good. Let's just change this to 60. And also to note that every chart has to have the same session times as well. Otherwise, you're going to throw off the synchronization of the back trading or the chart replay, which is something I learned the hard way when things weren't lining up. Some of my prices were correct and some of them were off by quite a bit because the times were not the same. So they should be the same because I duplicated it. And, look, and also, all the charts have to have the same number of days to load. So more or less, just make sure everything matches and you should be fine. And once that goes, we can hit Control R, standard replay, charts with same link number. I'm gonna use, a, uh, use start date time. We're actually gonna go back. Before I do this, let me open up a DOM just to show you how to do that. Open trading DOM. We're going to do the June Open trading DOM right there. It looks hideous, but that's okay. So let's just say we have this in the background. Make this a little bit smaller. So trade trading simulation has to be on. Make sure you have that set. Otherwise, you might have some problems where you, I'm not 100% sure that. Uh, even if you're not in trade simulation, when you go to this back testing, if you accidentally it triggers an order, that's something I don't want to find out the hard way. So just make sure you're in trade simulation. And go to chart settings one more time, and you're going to go to advanced settings and link one. And go here to the main settings, days to load. We can do 60. And everything else should be good. Let me just set up the bracket really quick. 
Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Should all be working, I believe, yeah. Okay, so that's set up. I would love to attach this somewhere, but I'm just gonna leave this on the side right now. It's gonna be on the out to the back. So let's hit Control R, and you start date start time. So all we have to do, so before I hit play, I'm in Pacific Standard Time, so usually I start 30 minutes beforehand just because I want to give myself 30 minutes after I do my affirmations, meditation, before I actually look at any charts, I'll do all that, and then it's 6 a.m. or earlier, I'll start analyzing the market. I won't take any trades, obviously, but I will just look at all my zones. I start at the four hour, I start at the one, the, then the 30 minutes, look at the pivots, look at the overall, the, the macro trend for intraday, and then go to the five and 10 tick range bar charts to see, you know, what on the micro trend, what is that looking like? You know, what levels do I have? Can I draw some Fibonacci's, whatever. Um, and then get start to get trading and get ready about 10 till 6.30 about when the market opens. But you can use a start date time here. I always use that so I can put myself back in a certain date and time to get going. So this jump method is pretty cool. So you can actually, I believe this is a minute right here, or maybe that, that might be seconds actually. So if I did something like this, I believe this is 10 minutes. Yeah, you can see the, the format here. And when you are when you hit play, let's just put it at a speed of one. That's just one to one, the market time, and you can scale it based on whatever you want. There's some pre-filled values here, but you can type whatever you want. I always have skip empty periods filled. And this is really cool when you're actually hitting play, you can skip forward, say 10 minutes if there's nothing happening. You can do it by number of trades and you can do it by the next bar. So if you're on the five minute, it'll just go the next five minute bar. But let's hit play and let's see it load. Make sure you click this first one. Actually, before we get started, let me hit, uh, let's wait till this loads. I'm gonna hit stop. I wanna show you something that's really important that you guys have to do to make sure that you're keeping track of the data especially if you're using the market, historical market and uh, depth uh, data, such as like this study right here, where is it? Market depth historical graph. If you're using that, make sure you go to global settings. And I think it's symbol settings for the ones that you wanna back trade. Make sure, let me just find, uh, where's the yes? Probably, okay, that's the micro, it's up more right here, EP. There you are. So use pattern matching, that's fine. You have contract months, whatever. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. So there's a, where is it? Because you wanna record the data so you have it. Make sure that these session times match your charts. Very important. So this actually should say 6.30. Session end time, that's fine. This should say six as well. Use evening session, yes. So here it is. Record, bid ask average, yes. Record market. Depth data, yes, make sure that is clicked so you get all the data. I don't think you actually need this one, but you definitely need to record market depth data to be if you're using the order book study. So then you just hit okay, and that's good. I'm gonna click save on my chart book. I'll just say chart replay example. So let's hit control R, and this is where the fun part begins. Let's say, let's just speed it up to five. You start day time, or start at 6 a.m. Okay, make sure you hit, do not clear trade data for symbol and account. That is so important, because if you click this one or that one, you're gonna wipe out all the data that's recorded up to this point. So you're gonna have nothing to go off of if you're using that order book study, the market historical depth study and you're going to lose all that information so make sure you click the first one do not clear trade data for symbol and account and hit okay and watch everything load 
can move this to the side. So this is what the market looked like on May 8th of this year. So if I were to go and verify that, where's May 8th? So we're somewhere in this area, right? Looks about right to me. So now what you can actually do, since it's going at a speed of five, you can actually see right here, it's a five minute bar. So you can see we started at 6 a.m. The 30 minute right here has started around the same time or at the same time. And then you have your DOM also trading that way. So if I were to enter a trade here, it should work got filled. Now you can actually test. Looks like I'm going to get stopped out because that was a terrible trade. You, you can see, obviously, I was just demonstrating this, but everything works and you can record if you're in SIM, so you're in SIM trade right there, all the trade that you want, all the, the uh, practice you want to do. So it's pretty awesome. And if you want to customize this, you can go ahead and customize it. I mean, it's like, it's, this is very similar to how Thinkback is supposed to work and think or swim, but that software is a piece of crap. It has never worked, especially with futures. There's always bugs in it and think or swim never wants to take the time to fix it. So that it forced me to find another solution such as Sierra chart. And I mean, this thing works really well. You can add all kinds of studies and, and you can literally trade the same way you do in real time in the past. And, figure out your strategy and you can really iron out the kinks that you have when you're trading real money and you, you'll, you end up getting a lot better as a trader, you know, because a lot of the same mistakes you, you make with real money will actually happen in the back trading. So um, I hope this was a helpful tutorial for you guys. I really hope that if you are a beginner trader or if you have traded and you're pretty experienced, I'm sure you already do stuff like this, but if you're a beginner, it's a really good idea to brush up on your skills a couple times a week doing something like this. You don't have to use Sierra chart. There are other solutions out there, but this is one of the better ones. And I mean, do this a couple times a week, three days a week, an hour, hour a day. I mean, I have my schedule doing it Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, you know, for specific reasons, Tuesday, because it's the second day of the trading week. So it helps me stay fresh. Thursday is almost, you're almost finished, gets ready for, I get ready for Friday and Sunday is uh, the first day. It's the day before the actual week begins. So it keeps you in tune with the market, keeps you fresh and it's a good idea. Keep your skills sharp. So um, thanks for watching guys. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that logo that's popping up now. Appreciate your support. And don't forget to like, share and, and comment on this video, what you liked about it. And I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.